Hey! <laughs> so, um, I went grocery shopping and have all the produce that I'm going to use for the next couple of weeks between now and after Easter. And um, I thought I would um, show you what I bought and then kind of walk through um, what I'm going to, how I'm going to prepare it. Um, so, I just have to say, since she's on here, Lindsay, this is so much more fun when you're here videoing it. So, um, <laughs> I just saw her pop on. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, um, it is way more fun when I have a friend here that's videoing it, but since I'm all by myself, I just thought I would um, kind of show you what I have. I'm going to have to hold it up because I cannot um, show the counter and be able to read the thing at the same time. All the hearts always give me. <laughs> so, um, anyways, this is what I bought, and, um, and then I'm going to wash it and take pictures, and then later, who knows, later tonight, like at midnight, when people are waking up in the UK, um, oh, then I'll probably be putting it away. So I am a super night owl, and I have been fighting an Eric all day today. So I haven't been doing anything I'm supposed to be doing. So uh, here's I got this beautiful romaine lettuce um, at our market yesterday. Um, so we have a local market that is really fun, and I stop in there first. Um, so I got this at Four Dave's, and I got some beautiful strawberries. I got a smaller container um, of strawberries this time so I just got one pound so these are from poor Dave's and then I got peppers um, from there too so I got a big a red and an orange actually I got two reds so anyways I picked these up yesterday and then I got some so I didn't buy um, bag spinach at um, Costco because I have a bunch in my freezer. I got the bigger spinach and it has honestly been in my refrigerator all night so it's all wilty like this because I didn't do this yesterday like I should have. Um, again, I had an earache and didn't want to so I just put it in like this um, but I will show you how I will revive this and how it will last for weeks. Um, so anyways, I'm just going to talk about it a little bit here and kind of um, answer some questions and then I will wash all the things and take pictures and then later tonight um, then I will put these all in jars and containers and show you how I did that so um, you probably won't be on live this whole time um, with me and if you're not that is okay um, we will replay this here and then we will <laughs> we will um, also put it um, Oh, <laughs> sorry. I was saying so. We will also put it on YouTube so you can check it out later. But yes, I did not buy the bags of spinach because I have bags of spinach in the freezer for smoothies. As soon as my mouth is healed all the way and I can start eating smoothies. But when it's fresh like this in the refrigerator, we do eat it for salads. Um, so, and I miss when we don't have enough. The other thing we don't normally buy in the winter time. Well, I guess it's, we get have one nice day. Is it spring yet? Yeah, we'll call spring, but anyways, um, I normally don't buy green beans. I actually hardly ever buy them. I normally just grow our green beans that we're going to use for the year, but people keep asking me about green beans, so I bought some green beans. You can tell that they were left in the bag all night, and so now they're, like, wet, um, so I will be washing these and putting them in a container. If I would have left them in the plastic like this um, for a week, they would have just been totally ruined, so... Anyway, so that is green beans. I bought I bought those just specially. Well, we're going to eat them, but especially because people keep asking me about them. Something else, and I'll go back and grab all these questions after I show you what I have here. Um, people ask me about zucchinis all the time, and this is something else that we don't buy very much because we grow them, and then they last in our pantry for our grown ones um, for months. So we just finished eating the last of the zucchini. I don't know, like a month or so ago. Um, but this size that you get at the store, those are ones that you put in the refrigerator after you wash them. I'll, I'll go through all the things. I just wanted to kind of show you what I had here. Um, kiwi is something else that we've been getting asked about a lot. So I was really trying to grab things, well, things that we're going to eat. We're going to eat it all. But things that you guys have been asking about too. So um, this is one that I kind of forget about buying sometimes because I'm kind of allergic to them, so sensitive to them. But Mike really likes them and they will get eaten. I got more oranges. I got another green onion. So a green onion. We I used the last of it the other day. And I just got one cucumber this time. 
and I got a bag of carrots. Again, we will, I'll tell you all the things about that in a minute. Tomatoes. I got a regular head of cabbage for, to make a jar of sauerkraut, which I will show you guys how to do that um, in a video, not tonight, um, but in the next week or so. <laughs> so um, I'll do a video on sauerkraut and then that one will be on YouTube also so um, you can watch it anytime but I did buy cabbage so everybody that was worried about that and then I got a uh, purple cabbage which I like purple cabbage cold they're not cold well, I like coleslaw too but um, sauerkraut also which I have a bunch of it in my um, refrigerator but um, to made natural dyed eggs is why I grabbed this one so whatever's left over I will probably make coleslaw or something with them so anyways but I did get them. I got the cabbage to teach you how to make sauerkraut. So um, that way it will happen in the next couple weeks. I got um, celery and a pineapple and a mango. And then I got some fresh basil. So these are the bigger ones. And oh, I was saving something for last and that was Oh, no, I'll show you this. Um, I got the grapes, and they were so good. These are the candy grapes. These are not organic, but they're amazing. And I got those, and they were so good last time, like for the whole two weeks, three weeks after we went grocery shopping, we've been like, we want more grapes. So I got two packages of those this time. So I got smaller strawberries and more grapes. <laughs> that was really important. Um, to me and then you know how I like changing out my things so I got these cute little carrots um, that are napkins so I'll probably leave these up because I I tried really hard to get ones that didn't say happy Easter or something on them um, that were like a generic just vegetable and um, so I'll probably keep these up longer and I know I talk about these all the time but um, in the in our crisper drawer and the bottom of it during the winter time is when I normally do it I like changing these up every single month or holiday um, and that's it's just my fun thing they cost like three dollars depending on where you get them and um, I have <laughs> I have over the years had a problem with seasonal depression and I find that celebrating all the little holidays and pushing myself through the winter time is one thing that has really helped and so this like three dollar little thing like really helps me and then if things are left over then I just put them in with my springtime or my I keep them all together so Valentine's Day St. Patrick's Day and Easter those those springtime um, decorations that I keep together the extra ones I can just throw in a tub and use them for the next year and whatever but I'm just telling you it's a little tiny thing that makes me happy and helps me progress through the winter time um, and know that like it's going to be okay and <laughs> the sun is going to shine again in the Seattle area <laughs> so um, the other thing that super helps me um, know that I survived winter is I have a neighbor that has he hates it he hates his tree but he has kept a cherry blossom tree um, up in his yard because it's the the first one that blooms um, near me and um, so my tree doesn't bloom for a couple more weeks after his blooms but he does not like his tree he always tells me the day that my first cell sign goes up um, that that tree is coming down but he keeps it up because he loves me <laughs> and, so, and we really care about him he's kind of like an adopted um, grandpa in our family but um so anyways it's just really special that he does that for me but and and it's for me so <laughs> um anyways i have a little tiny hair here that's driving me nuts all right so that was part of items i'm going to scroll back and see questions but what do you want to see first what do you want me to talk about so um i'm going i saw a couple questions there's lots of people jumping on. Um, okay, now that I found out this this husky person that's on here is not, you know, a Washington husky, and I don't have to say go Cougs every time. <laughs> this is like the second or third time in the last couple of days that um, they have caught me. So, <laughs> hey, <laughs> um, they were on earlier today when Mike was making those potato boxes outside. Oops. Okay, my screen's stuck. Like me two seconds here. Okay, so much fun. Where do I ship? 
I don't ship anything. I don't know. Um, for the book, if that's maybe what you're asking about, for the book, I, um, oh, where do I shop? Okay, <laughs> well, for the book, it's on Kindle. So um, it's where do I shop? That was the clarification. So I normally start first at our local market, and then my second stop is normally to Costco, and then I normally do a third stop because it's normally like, do, do, do. So I either go to a produce stand, Costco. If I'm going to Costco that time, I try to go to Costco every other time I go grocery shopping. So once every six weeks, not every three weeks. Um, and then to our local grocery store to get just any random little things that I might need for the next month. Um, and then when the produce stands open up, I love a produce stand. <laughs> and um, so they're closed all winter. They normally start opening back up in around April ish. So, um, when they start opening back up, then I get more of my things that I can, um, from the, um, produce stand. So when I'm buying like 150 pounds of tomatoes, I get those at the produce stand. Um, so I like doing, so some people might only want to go to Costco or something at, or one place at one time. I find if I go shopping and I just hit everything that I need to do and do it all in one day, then I spend less. So if I go to Costco this day and Target that day and this that day, then I end up spending a little bit here and a little bit there and then my brain doesn't calculate <laughs> like, oh yeah, I just spent this much money at this other store. So, which I normally know, like when I get home and calculate everything, but that's why I try to do it all together and through the pandemic, um, it just made me feel safer also to get all of our errands done in one day and then I just didn't go anywhere for three day week, three weeks <laughs> afterwards. So um, I've been trying to keep that up. It had worked really well for the last two years and it just works well for me. Uh, somebody teased me about my spinach in the freezer. I do have a lot of spinach in the freezer. It's half of what it was last time. I'm working through it. Okay, how do you keep your cut carrots? So let me just grab So I have this size Pyrex container, which they're at Costco. They're in our Amazon storefront too, but they're cheaper at Costco if you have a Costco, Costco membership. The whole package of like 24 things is around $24, $24.25. But anyways, this Pyrex is glass, and then it has a plastic safe lid. I want to say airtight leak proof. Um, made in the United States. But anyways, this snaps right on there. But I normally will cut, I wash my carrots and then I peel them and I cut them into strips. Um, normally like half the size of this and I cut them into strips and they fit in here and then, um, yeah, they fit this way in here. So they're great for grabbing for a snack and then if I need them smaller for a recipe, it's easy just to run a knife through them really quick and cut them the rest of the way. And by washing them, peeling them and putting them away, I can do that tonight and they will last like a whole month. So I guess I'll just talk about carrots for a second. Hey, so I got little cute little carrots up there on top. If you haven't seen them, that hood is not going to stay like that. That's just the intermediate <laughs> portion of it. But um, the so the carrots I wash, I peel, and then I put them into sticks and put them into the container like that. Um, I also do that with celery. If um, if I need to refresh them, then you can put them in. Ooh. Yeah, that's not washed yet. That feels weird. But um, if you need to... Sorry, that totally sidetracked me. <laughs> if you need to refresh them, I put them in water overnight, in filtered water overnight. So they don't need to sit in water for weeks, just overnight and then drain them out, out of the water. Um, if you don't have the flat container, you can put them in a mason jar with the lid. And I don't buy the baby carrots anymore because they're soaked in chlorine and I just don't like that. So I rather get the organic carrots that are not and they last for a month and baby carrots don't last for a month. So no matter what you do to them. Um, so I like getting the bigger ones. Okay, let's see. Um, interesting how your purchasing habits have changed due to questions or the need to photograph and teach. Yep. <laughs> no. Um, it actually... The the one thing with that is we normally don't buy strawberries in the winter time ever. And so that one has been something since we went viral with strawberries in a jar. Um, 
we have bought strawberries all winter long so I just feel like I have to always have strawberries in the fridge the strawberries that um, if you go back and you see from earlier today the ones from the live um, we just did a quick little video about the chickens and we gave them the like the last six strawberries from the last package but we're sick to death of strawberries let me tell you we are <laughs> tired of strawberries we don't normally eat them in the winter time we normally eat seasonally and mix up what we're eating and um you know i if it wouldn't have been for strawberries in the jar i just would have or like teaching you guys and feeling like i need to have strawberries all the time um i would have just bought the grapes and been super excited that that was what was in my fridge right now and um so but we normally we normally do this we normally seasonally change um what we're doing throughout the season or throughout the year so um some things i will always have you know like lettuce and different things but um Oh, I guess I did buy more onions and potatoes, but, or, yeah, onions and potatoes and put those away already. This was just stuff that was fridge stuff. Um, so, yeah, so we, we try to seasonally mix it up and do different things and not be bored. Um, yay, I'm German. Love me some sauerkraut and red cabbage. Oh, that's cool. So there's so many people that want to learn how to make sauerkraut and so many others that, um, if somebody wants to know about the tomatoes um and so many others it's just part of their life and that's how i kind of feel about this produce stuff that i had just done it forever and this was just how we do things and this is part of my life that i didn't think that other people would want to know any of these things <laughs> and, and i'm finding that um, they actually do so um anyways cherry tomatoes so totally different than um like I call them summer tomatoes because I don't buy tomatoes in the winter time. But um, besides cherry tomatoes, but the cherry tomatoes I wash in the vinegar wash and then I put them in a jar with a metal lid in the refrigerator. So summer tomatoes they go on the counter and cherry tomatoes I put in the refrigerator because I'm the only one in the house that likes these normally. Mike has a newfound like I wouldn't say love a newfound like for them the last couple months. And, um, but anyways, so I'm normally the only one that eats these and, um, I was, they were going bad and they were going to the chickens all the time. And I found out if I put them in a jar, then they last for a whole month. So for the last couple of years, that's what I have been doing. And, um, I bought the basil because Mike has a newfound love of caprese like skewers so I can get him to eat tomatoes. Um, this is kind of funny too is i find that i eat probably half this container of tomatoes while they're drying so i guess i love them i'm like a chicken and just want something red i think <laughs> when i'm picking them out um over the evening when they're drying when, my, when i do the produce wash but um i end up like only putting half of them into the refrigerator because i eat so many of them that first night so um which i also tell families that it's okay like if somebody likes something and wants to eat it when you're cleaning your produce like once every three weeks like just buy a little bit extra of something that you know that they're going to want to eat and it's not like a bad thing like the more produce that your family's eating that is a good thing so just plan ahead a little bit and know that you're not going to be throwing this produce away so it's worth it so um somebody said hey ladies um okay let me scroll Okay, for so I think I already asked this another question about the carrots. This weird one is driving me crazy. But anyways, about the carrots that I only put water in it if I have pictures of them in the book if you want to see. But if I can bend it all the way and it's bent in half um, because I left it in the crisper drawer and didn't cut it into sticks, I'll put this in a jar of water just overnight. Um, it doesn't need to sit in water for weeks. So just overnight, it will totally like refresh it to be a, a crispy carrot again. So um, there's pictures on the blog. I don't know. There's pictures in the book for sure about that. So um, let's see if there's more questions. Just scrolling. Somebody said those are my daughter's faves, but I'm not sure which one. Um, so the basil, somebody's asking about. Normally I keep a, here I'll just grab it. I keep a live plant 
um, a live plant on my windowsill all the time and these like to be in water. I will say I wasn't paying attention as quickly and I just haven't had a chance, but if you can get this not in the, um, I can't think of what that's called, like a peat pot, it's better. I've been really watching this to make sure it doesn't get moldy. Um, so they like to sit in just a little tiny bit of water at all times and I normally use filtered water on them. So this is a couple of months old. I could cut it back and let it regrow. And then once summer starts, then I start just growing it in after Mother's Day, then I start growing it outside. So I always have basil all winter long on the windowsill and it lasts, it normally lasts like I get one in the, in the fall, like in October and it'll last like the whole winter until May. So anyways, but you have to keep water in the bottom. So again, if <laughs> normally I put this in a different pot, so it's not this one, but I've been really watching it to make sure that it doesn't get moldy. So you don't want mold. On the outside containers so sometimes they come in plastic sometimes I put it in a terracotta pot just make sure that this isn't getting moldy so you don't want mold at all I'm gonna put that back and then I bought basil like the larger basil these won't keep as long and sometimes they won't even keep a couple days so when I open them up if I can trim the ends, then I will trim the ends and I will put them in water. So all the ones that I can keep, I'll show you. I'll still wash them like I normally do. So I would wash them like I do the lettuce and different things or in the book, the, um, uh, what did we do this time? Parsley? I think we put parsley in this book. Um, anyways, so I would wash these just like I would with the vinegar water. I would trim these and I would put them in a jar like this. So that is great. If you have a longer one like this that has, um, has a stem and you can do that, it smells amazing. But oftentimes the stems are broken and then you can't do much with that. So if the stem was broken, those are the ones that I tried to eat the soonest. So when I would be picking through these, I would be encouraging Mike to, to make some skewers and those would be the first ones that we would eat. But if, so if they're broken, it's really hard to get them to stay longer. You can wrap them in a paper towel, a wet paper towel, um, to do that. But the best, the best way is if you can get the longer ones and trim them and put them after you wash them. Trim them and put them in filtered water. And let me grab, here, give me a second. I didn't buy any new ones this time. So this is parsley and this is from February 1st. So I have the February 1st parsley on there. So this is parsley. So February 1st, it's March 26th today. And then this is cilantro from March 1st. So again, I trim the ends. And then as I'm doing this refresh in the refrigerator, I would trim the ends again, like just a little tiny bit to open up the, the vascular system. But I just, I think of it as like pores, but <laughs> it's actually the vascular system of the plant. <laughs> so, um, Anyways, I trim the ends and it just refreshes it again, just like flowers. But these are from March 1st and these are from February 1st. So these are parsley, these are cilantro and like, that's pretty good. So anyways, so again, with the basil that doesn't have the broken top, I will wash them and put them in the jar just like that. So, and I'll post pictures tomorrow later tonight. I'm not sure. Oh, somebody noticed my stuffy and look, I have a fan. So it's there. <laughs> um, we have been in the kitchen remodel for a year, <laughs> a year officially, um, Valentine's day. So a year and, um, yeah, so that is the stove. There is going to be a beautiful cover that's going to be over this and it's going to lift up and all the things. Um, so anyways, I got my fan up. So I have a new, I have a new little frame around me here. <laughs> so, 
<laughs> but in the meantime, while we're waiting for the cabinet, I put up some um, spring decor up there for a few days until Mike decides to work on it again. So, anyways, well, he was making potato boxes today. And he was making potato boxes today for you guys. So, I would have, I was just like, oh, they'll last one more year. And he's like, no, like, people want to know how to make them. And so, anyway, so I would have, like, let them go one more year. They were about ready to fall apart. He probably could have, like, reinforced them a little bit and we could have got one more year out of them. They were about 10 years old. But he made new ones for you guys today. Um, and then we moved all the blog posts um back one more week so next week will be a blog post about all the measurements and stuff if you didn't catch the live and want like the measurements to go cut them yourself so the video is up um, we will make a shorter video out of that and put it on YouTube but like that hour-long video of how long it took for him to do the project is up and um, and now is the time to be planting potatoes if you want to be planning to be I have a hard time with that. If you want to be planting potatoes, it's now's the time you do that. So here we normally say around St. Patrick's Day, my mom says Good Friday. And then I had a reminder that Good Friday like changes. It's not always the same week um, of the month. So anyways, somebody said thank you, Mike. Yeah. So if you haven't seen that video, I totally like he didn't know, he thought I was just going to take a couple of pictures and then I ended up like filming them for an hour. So <laughs> he wasn't prepared at all. <laughs> but um, anyways, is there any more questions that you get all the hearts? Um, is there any more questions you guys want to see? Do you want to see me wash any of these? Um, just let me know. And then if you don't have questions or don't want to see it, then I'll probably just turn this off and off of the live and then just film little um, videos. So um, great job, Mike. The the hubs come through. Yeah, yeah. He totally did for you guys. So um, I got I got two new potato boxes out of the deal, but he did it for the cross legacy. <laughs> so um, okay. I was trying to think if there was anything. Oh, oh, this was the other produce item I set aside. So I totally almost forgot. If you don't know and live somewhere else in the world that you don't grow these, that's what I was kind of thinking. These are rhubarb. They kind of look like celery. Um, but I live in the rhubarb capital of the world. So, um, anyways, rhubarb is so just, we, um, we, you know, know what it is and everything here, but I have so many followers from all around the world. I thought this might be an interesting one that you guys might not know what it is. So I wash this just like I would celery. Um, I'm really funny about, these aren't as, oh, they don't have as deep as a um, curve in the middle as celery does, but I do wash them like I do celery. And then um, they were just so pretty and Sometimes I'll just cut these straight up just like this and just put them in the freezer. And then when I go to make something with strawberries or a rhubarb strawberry pie, um, then I just have them handy. But they were so pretty yesterday. I just had to grab them. I don't have a real plan for them. But um, normally you make them with like a dessert in a strawberry rhubarb pie or um, jam or something like that. So strawberries are kind of like the thing that goes with rhubarb. But anyways, I just thought it was fun that... I live in the rhubarb capital of the world and we have like a rhubarb festival <laughs> like, and so I just I thought it was fun so I got them I do grow them in my yard um, but they don't we don't see them for a couple more months um okay somebody says I always have con condensation in my strawberry jar what am I doing wrong okay the condensation on the jar I do a lot too let me see if I have something that has condensation in it not really. Never mind. Um, okay, this is a good example. So I cut these apples two weeks ago. Um, and this banana, this banana is the banana that ended up in the book. Like exactly two weeks ago. Oh, today's Saturday. Sunday. Whatever. 13 days ago. But these apples are for two weeks ago too. Um, so you see how there's a little bit of condensation there? Like that's totally okay. If it was bothering me, um, then I would just grab a towel. Where's my clean one? I would just grab a towel and just grab that condensation out of there. Um, mostly why I was talking about it so much was people were 
um, not following me and or just following the success of strawberries in a jar and they were doing other videos and telling you to soak them for like 30 to 40 minutes and just they were they were trying to copy what I was trying to teach but make it different and they were teaching you wrong and so if you soak a berry for 30 or 40 minutes you're not going to get it to dry back out and it's going to start fermenting in the jar so um, if you are washing it for two minutes rinsing it off and then drying it out all the way the little bit of condensation that's in a jar isn't that big of a deal like occasionally for those first like two days I'll just take the lid off for a little while and put the lid back on um but as like that condensation was in the jar a little bit like I didn't worry about this at all and these apples these apples are seriously two weeks old they're in here um so and they're green apples which normally don't last that long but normally I would just cut up an apple to be able to use the other half the next day I was I actually forgot about this one but this was two weeks ago it was the same night that I was doing the um, bananas so this is kind of interesting so this is what this banana looks like and I cut it two weeks ago um, and then this is the same exact banana from that night so uh, Lindsay and Leslie on here they know the night that I ran to go get bananas like I was just like I think there's something to this and um, I just all day had been like I need to go get bananas I need to go get bananas and I knew my grocery shopping week wasn't until this week it actually should have been on Monday but I kept pushing it off all week but this is what this banana looks like they were bought the same night and like it doesn't look like that at all so um, anyways this has been two weeks I, I would not leave it cut in a jar for two weeks the whole goal of it being cut in a jar was if you had like a little or somebody that's diabetic that's only supposed to eat half a banana and you're trying to save the other half for a later snack that day or the next day you can have a fresh banana still so but now because I like to science experiment stuff this is the same day I bought both these bananas so um, this is the not organic one that I had wrote on so and then this one is the organic one so yeah I had I had wrote on it not organic so if you go back and look at the bananas in a jar picture and then the, this is the same day of bananas so anyways just interesting to me so we will kind of just keep seeing what's happening with us I don't like wasting food those bananas dying on my counter have been driving me crazy um, but it's just interesting to see these things and and how we can get them to last longer so um, okay I'm scrolling um, on the East Coast the rhubarb are not as pretty I know isn't this a pretty rhubarb so sometimes they're more green um, but they were so pretty I had to grab them and I just thought it was fun to be able to tell you a little bit more about where I live um, that we have rhubarb here so um, what temperature do you set my fridge to oh I think let me 36 degrees is that 36 degrees <laughs> so <laughs> I just I was doing something the other day and I noticed that little temperature thing came up so my fridge is at 36 degrees bananas in a jar life-changing I know I know so the whole goal like it's great that they last three week, three days <laughs> three days but the whole goal is if you can just get them to last from a morning snack to the next day like holy cow like holy cow <laughs> I used to have a house full of littles like I had one that just liked to open it like didn't like to eat it just like to open it and then try to get somebody else to eat it so which is kind of funny um, because I used to wear black olives on my fingers and not want to eat them either so my grandma would only let us um, play with the black olives and put them on our fingers if we could get other people to eat them so the whole peeling a banana thing I thought was kind of funny um, so I thought she was I'm not sure I still maybe I don't know what I might have missed a question did I miss the question oh squirrel yeah I'm a little squirrel brain I know okay hold on 
Oh, my screen stuck. All right, if you were teasing me, I just don't even know. But since I love you both, and you're going back and forth, um, it's good. Okay. Oh, the questions sometimes just freeze. One day I'll have like a second tablet or something and it'll be easier to reach and read the questions. Somebody thought I was crazy. What? Oh, to go get the bananas. I know what you guys are talking about now. Okay. <laughs> Lindsay and Leslie are saying that you thought I was crazy, but no. I just had a tugging on my heart, and you know where my tugging on my heart's come from. And so I did what I was supposed to do, and I went and got bananas. And now bananas are in the book, and bananas are going to be in a newspaper article maybe tomorrow. So um, anyways, I just, I believe in that little tugging. It comes right here in my chest. Uh, and when I get that little tugging, then I do what I'm supposed to do. <laughs> and so, and that was to get bananas. It was at midnight on Sunday night, <laughs> two weeks ago. And I had been talking to both of them. They were helping with the last final edits of the book that were, that were being turned in at midnight. And I just like, Oh, I need to go get bananas and I didn't want to wait until today to go get bananas. I did it two weeks ago. So I ran in and ran back um, and I got back in like 10 minutes. I spent $2 and I got these bananas that are, as somebody said, that they are changing the world again with bananas in a jar. So, And well, even half an apple, like these have been in this jar for two weeks. Again, I would have tried to eat these like, you know, the next day or whatever, but two weeks in a jar with an apple. Again, how many have had somebody grab a bite of an apple and decide they don't want the rest of them? So that is two weeks. Okay, let me scroll. Somebody asked about the zucchini. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So these are the zucchinis. So, okay, right here, I, like, I don't wanna do it again, but you just barely touched it with my nail and it made like a piercing in it. Um, that is the difference of having these smaller zucchinis and having like the leg size zucchinis that I get out of the garden. So um, the ones that I grow in the garden and they are huge, um, I probably overgrow them because I think big vegetables look cool. <laughs> but, um, anyways, those, the skins um, cure on them and those can be washed um, and then I rotate them over the weeks and stuff, but they can be washed and they can be Put in the pantry but if you just barely touch the skin I don't want to ruin my zucchini but if you just barely touch the skin it makes marks in it um, it's so um, delicate compared to what you get in from your garden um, these are just grown so quickly um, and they're not like sun cured and stuff as long as um, what the big ones are so that's why these little ones I treat them like cucumbers and then um, when I say I have zucchini in my in my pantry, which I don't right now because we ate them all up. So they, we put them in there in September and we ate them by February. So in the pantry. So that is different than these smaller zucchinis. So um, I wash these in the vinegar water, which helps um, kill off any mold spores because that's what's going to help deteriorate it the quickest. And then I have two drawers in my crisper drawer. I normally keep things like zucchini and the cabbages and cauliflower. Um, if I have any carrots that I didn't cut up, I keep those all in one drawer. And then my other drawer, I actually didn't even buy any new ones this time. In my other drawer, I always keep um, I always keep the um, lemons and avocado, lemons and limes and avocados in the same crisper drawer. These are probably not going to last for another three weeks. Um, I just have been buying too many avocados lately, honestly. Um, so I keep these all in the same drawer with any citrus, which these are citrus, but I'll keep the oranges all together in this drawer and these are all buddies that make each other happy and they last longer so these are over a month old and um i didn't buy any new ones this time and then i have these so um anyways so avocados lemons we've been in seven newspapers around the world because the avocados and the lemons this is the secret that makes them last longer is each other being buddies 
and then as you cut them you put them in a jar like this this is a wide mouth I was trying to, oh it says zesty salsa on it <laughs> I didn't take off the writing but um anyways you put it in a jar like this this is a wide mouth pint jar and if you keep the skins and the pit on it and put it in the jar it'll last like three to five more days um so anyways avocados in a jar like this let's see what else okay somebody asked about washing and keeping the green onions ah uh, see just barely touched it and i just nicked that zucchini so that is the difference between the garden zucchinis and the other ones so the green onions I will take this off and I will wash these like I wash everything else I'm always funny about checking in there <laughs> so anything that has a hole I'm always <laughs> checking for whatever might be growing in there but um anyway you should see me with raspberries <laughs> um those are my worst but um anyway well they're I'm really particular about looking inside every single raspberry but the green onions, I put those in a smaller jar. I don't know if I have one handy, but I have a smaller jar, like a jelly sized jar. No, it's like me. No, I don't have one handy, but a jelly sized jar, and I put them in there. And I normally put the water up to about here. And oh, I know where the jelly jar is. Or hold on. Hold on. There we go. Okay, so this is my typical jar that I put it in. So I normally put about this much filtered water in it again. Anything that I'm going to store in water, I make it filtered water. Um, that way it's not sucking up the chlorine and fluoride um, from our tap water. Anyways, this much. Keep this on my window seal. And then as these are growing, the, the roots will grow more um, over the next couple months. Um, and then I just occasionally will trim them. And if these kind of get slimy, um, I'll just remove a couple of the outer layers of it. And then they just keep regrowing. So um, normally I'm just using it for the greens and not for the white part anyways. And so they just keep regrowing regrowing and then every couple months I'll just decide to grab a new one and then I have a new one and then this is something that again over I normally only have during the fall to like May June ish like June and then yeah fall to May June but once I start getting onions in the garden then I just keep them in the garden and go out and just the ones that are growing I just go out and grab the tops off of them so um, I don't keep them on the windowsill all year long and then it's like a break for me to see like something different in the fall so again like when it starts to get gray and gloomy here I like to be able to bring in some different things that just remind me that the garden grows and it will come back again um so I only buy the green onions every couple months um one of the followers that's on here um she had got some really sad ones I'm not sure if she got them sad or they were just sad a couple days after because they were in the plastic bag in the fridge and I told her to cut them way back and put them do all the things that I just told you how to do and she's regrowing new ones so she was excited about that um, let's see thank you for all you thank you for all you share thank you thank you okay Oh, somebody asked if they want to know how I store green onions. I just did that one, so I think they were just repeating that question and letting me see it. What is the ratio to vinegar to water? Um, let's do that. That's a good one. Let's grab the salt spinner while I'm here. Let's talk about that first. Yes, scroll range. But this is my salad spinner. I like this one because it fits in my cabinet, and my old one didn't. And... There's like a lock button and I never use it. But anyways, that top like sits down. So the other one wouldn't fit in any of my cabinets because that top wouldn't lock down. I have a new cabinet now though, so it fits. But in my old kitchen, it was that way. And then let me grab the vinegar. It's still rolling around. I know I just pick it up and stop it. There we go. So anyways, this bowl holds 24 cups or 20 cups of water total, but if you put 10 cups of water in it, 
Um, and then the vegetables normally will fill it up all the way. But um, this is the bowl that I normally use. It's stainless steel. Um, and I've had it for like 25 years. <laughs> so I think I've had it since before we were married. Um, and then this is the vinegar. I know it's backwards. It just makes me feel better to show it. So um, with the Heinz, and I've noticed other companies too, they um, put produce on the ones that they want you to use for produce. So I've noticed that with a couple of the other companies too. Um, I was just at Costco yesterday and still two gallons of vinegar was $7. So I normally buy it in the gallons and then I refill this bottle. So um, this bottle, I think currently it has Old Monk um, distilled vinegar in it. <laughs> and um, anyways, I just keep refilling this glass bottle because I like the glass bottle. It's easy for me to hold up and show <laughs> and it's easier just for me altogether. But it's everything I do when I'm talking about vinegar is a quarter cup of vinegar in that large bowl and um, for two minutes, soak it for two minutes. So quarter cup of vinegar in that large bowl. If I'm doing something that's in a huge tub of things, then I just do that same kind of ratio. So um, anyways, while I'm talking about vinegar, in the United States, it's white distilled 5% vinegar. In the UK and Australia, it's 4.5%. It's the same thing. And then you don't want to get the vinegar that's seven to eight percent. It says cleaning vinegar. That is not for cleaning your vegetables. That's for cleaning your laundry and your showers. So um, get this one. Um, if you only have apple cider vinegar at your house, it does work. It is more expensive. This is better. Um, but I get the glass bottle. Like I've had this glass bottle for years, and I just refill it with the big plastic jug of it. So, anyways. Any questions on that? <laughs> so a quarter cup to 10 cups for two minutes. Yep, somebody typed it in there for me. Thank you. Um, the salt spinner and that same size bowl are both on the Amazon storefront, which are on the crosslegacy.com backslash start here. That is that new um, spot on the um, blog, the start here, um, that has a list for where to get the book, how to become a Patreon member, the Amazon store, the YouTube page, links to TikTok, how to sign up for the email, like all the different things. We put it all in one place. It's called the crosslegacy.com backslash start here. And it has all of the links to all of the things. <laughs> all right. Let me see if there's any more questions. It got stuck again. Okay, sometimes the asparagus gets slimy. Are you doing it in a jar like this? And um, is it filtered water? Did you wash it first? So I washed, this is not asparagus, so <laughs> I had asparagus the last round, and so I didn't get them this time. But um, actually, I didn't buy them the last round. I bought them February 1st, and they lasted until like a week ago, so for six weeks. But Anyways, um, the asparagus, I keep them in a wide mouth jar, like a larger one this size, the pint size wide mouth, in the fridge with filtered water. And um, it should last if you um, wash them first, um, that helps kill off any mold spores on it. So again, in the vinegar water, let them dry off and then put them in a jar. So if, yeah, in, the, in a plastic bag, they'll definitely get slimy. Um, thank you for all you, all the good you are doing. I also have a passion for family preparedness, a water bath, um, dry pack, and dehyd dehydrate. Yep, me too. <laughs> so, a uh, canner and dehydrator and um, all the things. Um, someday I would love to be a freeze dryer <laughs> person. Um, so, you know, if Harvest Right wants to sponsor me, I'm all for it. No. <laughs> Um, but that is my next step in preparedness is wanting to get a freeze dryer. There is only one company that makes a freeze dryer. They're called Harvest Right and um, they are very expensive. They're um, very expensive and so that is a someday wish list item but I would be freeze drying so many things if I had one. <laughs> um, okay, somebody said that they had well water if you have well water without chlorine water, then normally um, that is good. So, and you know, 
Are you getting your well water checked? Making sure that it's all good. All right, any other questions? I am here. All right. So let's just randomly talk about artichokes and then um, I'll see if there's any more questions and if there's not, um, then I'll jump off of here and start washing those things so I actually go to bed at a decent hour tonight. But um, it's not the washing that takes very long. It's me talking and taking pictures. <laughs> and um, then I end up like doing another video and all the things. So um, anyways, artichokes, I would trim the ends um, on here. I I'm going to wash it. I'm going to trim the ends. And then not in this jar. I just get a bigger jar. I put filtered water in here and I set it like this and I put it in the fridge and it will keep soaking up the water and this will stay fresh for like weeks and weeks. So um, anyways, that is how I do it. I do broccoli the same way. I trim the ends off of there so it opens up that vascular system of the plant again and it soaks up the water. When somebody sees that on replay, she's going to be super proud of me. I'm just saying so um, I'm going to get a like... Yay, you remembered that. <laughs> so I normally say the pores, like, or it's magic, but either way, it's just like a flower. You just cut it again and it will soak up water. Again, with filtered water, well, water. Um, I just don't use my city tap water. Oh, somebody said artichokes are their favorites in their house. Somebody, I was in a page yesterday, I was on Jordan Page's page yesterday, but they were saying that, that they live in California near where they grew. Um, artichokes and they got them for a dollar fifty or fifty cents a piece so I was just like oh my goodness this was four bucks but I love them and I hadn't had one in a while so I got one <laughs> but um, I was super jealous that she got hers for I think it was a dollar fifty a piece still like that's really great but um I saw someone else artichokes um oh can you please oh could I please ask how to store cut lemons, glass jars too? Yep, actually, you can. Yeah, in here. The um, let me grab it. I seem to get lemons in this size of the Pyrex the most. Like the well, this is a humongous lemon, but normally a half of one fits in there, um, really well. I'm wondering if I have a cut one in here. No. Oh, I have a line. line so yeah sometimes it's just random that I always use this size jar for this or I always use a flat for blueberries it doesn't mean they last any longer or anything um, it's just the container I normally use um, to keep them and then I know that's what I'm looking for but I think either a mason jar with the metal lid or the um, a Pyrex jar with the um, snap lid would be great for that so um Oh, Lindsay, if you're still on here, somebody was saying earlier today that the glass salad container is $70 in Canada and it's like half the price there. Here, so we want to try to find a glass container that is looks like my glass container and works like my glass container in Canada. So there is a random scroll brain and that's how I tell people on my team that like, ah, <laughs> we need to remember that. So um, yeah, we need to find... The glass container that will ship to um, Canada. So, uh, somebody's asking about cauliflower. Cauliflower, I did not buy this time. Um, but my main thing, main thing with cauliflower, even if you do nothing else, is I'm just going to use cabbage as an example. But um, just rip those, take it out of the plastic and rip those leaves off. So, you can wash it right when you bring it home or you can wash it when you're going to go use it. Um, either way works um, for a cauliflower. I normally typically wash it all together, but just get it out of the plastic. If nothing else, just get it out of the plastic. That's what causes it to brown and to mold on the top. Like just get it out of the plastic and throw it in the crisper drawer. Um, and then I normally break those extra leaves off too. And I think it helps um, the sides of it. Um, so that's what I do for washing it. Um, I normally wash cauliflower. I'm going to 
hold the cabbage it's gonna see funny but um i normally wash cauliflower and broccoli um with a tablespoon of salt and warm water in the bowl so not hot where it's going to wilt it but warm water that's the way I was raised. That's the way Mrs. Cooper did it. Like that's the way I know. And so, um, anyways, so tablespoon of salt and a warm water. Um, and this is kind of funny, but we only have at our house, I only do sea salt and Himalayan salt. Um, I don't buy any other kinds of salt. If I get swell brain and I forget and I put Himalayan salt in that instead of the sea salt, um, white salt, then um, it can turn the cauliflower a little bit pink. So it's not pink mold going on there. Then I just have to remember, oh yeah, Amy's school brain, I use the pink salt instead. So, um, and sometimes it's like right after I set it in there, then I'm like, I just did the wrong salt. But anyways, any salt that you do have is great. If you use pink salt, it might turn your cauliflower a tinge pink. Um, just so you know. Okay. Let's see. Oh, cool. See? My team is researching the glass jars now. I'll talk I'll show you what I'm talking about for us. Oh. You can tell that none of my produce items are in produce because I have too many jars in my drawer. So this so let's just sit here together. This is the Pyrex largest one that you get in the Costco pack. And this is the um, the one that we call the lettuce one. On our Amazon storefront, the picture that's on there right now, we're hoping someday we can get them to use one of our pictures and change it. But it has a whole roasted chicken in it. So if you go to our Amazon storefront, which is on the crosslegacy.com, start here, um, you will find our Amazon storefront. But this is the lettuce container that I use it will fit the whole head of romaine in there and it snaps down I can't do it one-handed but you can see the difference in size like this is the largest Pyrex container with the stock snapware and it's double the size so maybe somebody can check for me easily um what the current price is normally this is around $36 which seemed like a lot when I first got it but literally I have not thrown away one head of lettuce and it lasts for a month in here. Um, so, like a complete month. Um, but they totally, you can hear it snap. There we go. It's totally airtight, and the whole thing of lettuce fits in there. You can put spinach in here and anything. Um, but it also fits perfectly on my shelf, and I have a counter depth um, refrigerator. So, that's super important too, that it's still that same size for depth. It, that it fits in the fridge so it's just twice as high so so the one oh it's a one gallon I didn't even realize it was a one gallon oh oh wait wait, wait. oh the oh she's telling me something else the glass jars are a four pack is 20 per 20 percent off on Amazon right now um so that is these well, without the label, but um, that's a gallon size jar and it has a white lid. I don't know where the lid is. This this was I. This is the jar that I took out to the chickens earlier with last month's um, strawberries in it. So, anyways, this is the size. That's a gallon um, size. So they're saying that these are 20 percent off. If you can go through the Cross Legacy um, link, would be amazing. We've actually sold like so many of these. Like I'm waiting for. Somebody to figure out to like tell me. Oh wow. Oh, okay. So yeah, you guys see, you're all shopping for me. These are actually on sale for $28 in the United States. So these should be $28 in the United States. But somebody was saying that in Canada they were more. So we will find it out. So again, all of anything that I buy on Amazon, and I buy a lot of things on Amazon, um, they are listed in my storefront. So there's, this is also listed in the storefront. Any of the glass jars, like the sizes I use, those are listed in the Amazon storefront. And we, we listed the link for the storefront on the crosslegacy.com backslash start here. So it's super easy to find it all the time. Um, we're not allowed to post it on Instagram, 
Instagram and anyways we're not allowed to post on Instagram so that way you do have to go through the blog to find it um what else is oh here I'm just going to show you this because it's sitting here but um I just used the other night the last of the microgreens um that I had planted a couple weeks ago I I honestly planted them because they were cute for St. Patrick's Day. So, um, <laughs> anyways, but this is from Amazon also. This is a meat, or, this is not a meat, it's a mix of broccoli. Oh, I can't even say that. Kohlrabi, purple kohlrabi. I don't know. Radish, collards, and turnips. And this is the mix that I buy. This package is on Amazon. And then yesterday I had listed the, um, a link to the grow lights that we use. So I have a, I'll just show you. I have a tray here right on my kitchen counter. Normally we do like 15 trays and this year we're only doing the one. But um, these are our tomatoes and okra, okra and kale and spinach. Um, so those are growing like right here on our countertop. And then I will be making more um, microgreens and these only take like 10 days to grow so you only need like a little tiny bit this will make tons and tons of batches and um, it's kind of nice like when you're trying to spread out grocery shopping trips or not go to the store to have a little bit of extra greens that you can grow quickly like just right on your countertop so I know I said that right wrong okra right yeah okra yeah okra Did I say it? I might have said it. Okra. What's the whales? That's what I keep getting confused with. Is it, is it the same name or I'm saying two different things? Hmm? Hmm? What's the whales in the Pacific Northwest? What are those called? That's what that's what I'm getting the two the two things confused in my brain with. But anyways, I've never grown them before. I've never grown whales either. But um <laughs> Oh, okay, I did say it right. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I was worried. I do have speech issues, and sometimes I want to say something, and it doesn't come out right, so thank you. I have never, ever um, had okra my... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I can't read. Now they're telling me what <laughs> the whales are. <laughs> if I read it, I might say it wrong. But, um, oh, <laughs> anyways, I had never had okra until we went to Tennessee and... Um, in January ever so I got some seeds and I'm going to try to grow it I'm not sure if we're going to be able to grow it on this side of the mountains in um, western Washington where it's more wet um, but I am going to take um, one of these plants over to eastern Washington when we go over for Easter and see if they can grow it on the hotter side of the state so um, yeah that was my my speech issues coming right out right there um so <laughs> somebody said they love me thank you <laughs> love me with all of my imperfections <laughs> so um yeah so i for a while i had thought about doing something like this and my speech issues actually held me back from wanting to talk to people so um sometimes i just I know what I want to say in my brain, but it doesn't want to come out or my words get jumbled. And as everybody knows, I have a squirrel brain that just goes da, 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 all the time. <laughs> so um, anyways, uh, does anybody else have any questions while I'm here live? And then I need to like actually like wash this stuff and <laughs> get it drying so I can put it away tonight. Um, if you're checking back like in the morning, there will probably be a second video in a couple in a couple hours when I'm going to put this away or taking pictures. But don't stay up. So, yeah, yeah. See, I was I was getting this too. I'm not even gonna say both of them out loud. So, <laughs> um, yeah. Um. So, anyways. <laughs> There was a whale thing and a vegetable thing that I was getting confused with, and I just don't even want to get this confused in my brain. <laughs> so I'm not going to say that out loud again. But um, anyways, so I am going to wash my strawberries and wash all this produce, and then in a couple in a couple hours, I'm going to take a break. Let's not joke here. I'm going to wash this these produce. We're probably going to watch like you know a boat show or something, and um, <laughs> and then. Um, Oh, later tonight before I go to bed, then I'll put them in the jars. It only takes like 
10 or 15 minutes for me to put it in the refrigerator um, after they're dry. Um, I was confused because I've never heard of anyone growing the okra, okra plants here. Yeah, exactly. Nobody has, or like you might have, but um, I had never ever seen it in a store or anything. And so I got some seeds and um, I am trying to grow it. So, but I did say it wrong this morning when I was talking to one of my family members. So that's why I was all confused. So, um, okay. Any more questions? Did I show you any random things? I, did I show you this? But um, I took a picture with it earlier. Did I show you the pineapple? Um, the pineapple for sure, even though it's not something that goes in the refrigerator, I always, always, always wash. Always wash. Even if I'm not cutting it right away, um, I always wash because I swear they are like breeding grounds for fruit flies. So... Um, especially if it's in the summertime, like this isn't so bad because it's practically winter here still. But um, yeah, so I always, always wash the pineapple when I bring it home. Um, make sure that bad boy is dunked in there and I'll let it sit for a couple minutes. Um, but yeah, um, always, always, always wash these. The other one, I'm making a mess with it, but the other one too, it feels like kiwi fruit is another one that just... They like, they like to live on those. <laughs> so um, I always, always, always wash this when I bring it home, even if I'm going to cut it right away. Um, and then I always take the top as soon as I cut it, even if I'm bringing it home and cutting it that day, I always make sure I get the top out of the house. Um, so that's just something I'm really particular about, um, especially in the summertime, because once you start getting fruit flies, they're hard to get rid of. And then... There's like all the little tricks of putting like vinegar and um, dish soap in a jar and you can put like saran wrap or something over the top and poke little holes and then they get attracted to that. I'm sure over the summertime I'll be showing that a lot more, but if you're bringing home pineapple, I just swear to wash them. Um, can I wash a few things in the same water? Yeah. Um, so like things like the zucchini and avocados and lemons like these kind of things that aren't really that dirty i totally would throw them in and wash them at the same time um sometimes i would wash something like peppers you know kind of at the same time just depending on how much room i have in the bowl but um once you wash strawberries for the first time and see how dirty that water is like Ugh. and uh, <laughs> the lettuce is another thing um spinach like i i would never reuse the water for that um but yeah if there are things that have like skin you know that aren't really that dirty dirty you're just mostly killing off the mold spores on them then yeah you can totally use the same water um but i just kind of base it off of how dirty the water looks so if the water looks like completely after you wash it, then, um, then I, of course, dump the water out. And that's kind of how I base my, base how I'm going to rinse them too. So things like strawberries and lettuce and spinach, I always rinse these. Uh, celery is another one I always rinse. Um, the, the bowl is just filthy afterwards. I want to get any extra dirt out of there, but, um, I don't always rinse cucumbers. I don't know if I showed the cucumber, but um, I don't always like re-rinse a cucumber afterwards. It's not to get the vinegar off. It's to get any dirt that was lifted up on it. Um, so I said, thank you for all I do. Thank you. Okay. All right. Any more questions? Last chance. Last chance. So um, I don't think I have anything else random to talk about. You never know. So, um, tomorrow, thank you. Um, somebody said thank you for, somebody else said thank you for all I do. So, um, that is Leslie. And I will just say thank you for all you do because <laughs> she is our number one biggest supporter. Um, I haven't met her yet, but she only lives like an hour away from me and we are going to meet up soon. So, um, anyways, um, I totally forgot what I was, oh, tomorrow on the blog is pizza. So we are going to make um, we'll probably end up making pizza tomorrow. It'll depend on what Mike um, decides to do if he's doing remodeling stuff. But I was planning on making pizza on the day that it gets released on the blog um, for pizza. But um, 
we are doing pizza on the vlog tomorrow which gets released at 6 a.m. in the morning and then there's a YouTube link so youtube.com the cross legacy go check us out um, for pizza it's gluten free pizza um, on there but you can totally make it with gluten if you want to but anyways it's um, the instructions on how we make pizza and then all the hearts is <laughs> going but um so that is tomorrow and then for next week's vlog, we are going to do the potato boxes and Mike will have a list out of all the cuts that you would need for the boards. But if you wanted to do that and make the project before, then we did post that video um, earlier today. So there's a whole video that that is a tutorial of him doing it. So from earlier today, but by next weekend, we'll have the written instructions for that. And then before Easter, which I'm really excited about, we make natural food dye Easter eggs. Um, so we use things like um, purple cabbage and um, turmeric and um, coffee and different things that make different colors and that's how we make our Easter eggs instead of using um, like food dyes that a lot of people have allergies to um, and it's just better for you. So um, between now and Easter um, I'll make sure it's a few days before Easter so you don't have to go running to the store. But we will be doing natural food dyes on the blog um, and a video and all the things. Um, so anyway, so that's kind of what's coming up in the next couple of weeks. If you got the newsletter yesterday, um, there is the fajita recipe. We put that on the newsletter, so make sure that you open it up because the um, fajita recipes there and there's also a special offer for anybody that ordered the book and sees this like right now not months from now but if you ordered the book and you email us the order number if you're on the email list we will send you a, a printable pdf of that last chart in the book which is just like a game changer it's like one list that says store this in water and store this with paper towels and store this in glass and all the things so it's just one chart that we worked really hard on to make sure that we had all the information in one place and we made it printable as a special like um, book release kind of a thing so if you're catching this like you know in the next few days and you get the newsletter on thecrosslegacy.com um you're signed up for emails that's like a special bonus for the book launch right now so anyways that's all the things. Make sure you're checking us out on YouTube and I will probably be back live sometime this weekend doing something random. And um, so I just thank you, thank you for everybody that's here and have a good night. Have a great weekend and we'll talk to you later.